Welcome to your source for Research Innovation News, Research Business Daily Report. Sponsored today and all this week by Google Consumer Surveys, providing easy answers for every business decision. Every sports fan, including myself, has wondered at one time or another the factor played by luck in their favorite team's outcomes. I read a column about Barcelona's unimpressive showing against Bayern Munich in the Champions League soccer tournament a few weeks ago. The author wondered what had caused the Spanish powerhouse's embarrassment. Was it inferior personnel, bad strategy, questionable management, or just bad luck? He quoted a soccer expert, Martin Eastwood, who believes variation due to luck accounts for 35% of total variance. That leaves 65% to talent and everything else. Eastwood added that luck plays a much larger role in a single game. And he said it does account for half of a soccer team's winning percentage over a 20-game season. Next, David Kieselstein was TNS's CEO for North America from September 2008 through January of 2012. And it looks like his research experiences may have made a lasting impression in his new post as CEO of Penton Media. Media Business named David its top company executive in its Innovators of the Year competition. Kieseltine told Media Business that hiring new talent, including data scientists, is a key to Penton's new strategies. He's also emphasizing actionable ideas and insights, as well as data and workflow tools. Finally, Ipsos' is CEO for its open thinking exchange, Shelley Zalis, rejoins us today. This time to talk about new influences that research needs to track, what she also refers to as Generation C and something called her Gumby Theory. And I know you also believe that research is not yet in touch with the next generation, which you call Generation C. Yeah, you know, I think I've been doing a lot of learning. Um, you know, the, the whole world is... is you know, I said, the, the world has changed. It's not changing. And so I'm educating myself a lot, um, meeting with all kinds of agencies, from digital agencies, traditional agencies, brand consumers, you know, moderating a lot of panels with, with young people and, and, you know, older generations. And what is very common and, and very clear is it's the end of business as usual. And what I say is it's the end of business as usual and the dawn of the connected generation. And so we're moving from Gen X to Gen Y to now Gen C. Consumers today, and this is another Microsoft Solutions study that we did, it really talks about putting simultaneous screening in four buckets. Bucket one, we call content grazing. Content grazing is when you're watching television and you might be on a portable device and you're doing unrelated, um, you're, 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 using it in an unrelated way, which is really multitasking. You're watching television and you're just doing something else. The second we call investigative spider webbing, where you're watching the television, you're on your second screen, and you're investigating what you see on the television for yourself. So it's related content. Then we talk about social spider webbing. Social spider webbing, I'm watching television, I'm on my device, and I'm sharing information with all my friends about what I'm seeing. And the last one we call quantum, which is sequential screening. So it's taking you through your path to purchase or your decision journey of one thing to the next to the next. But those are all four different categories of how consumers today are simultaneously engaging with multiple screens. Mm. Okay. And the implications of that are enormous from how we start creating content that it influences mm. across channel. The three steps that are now necessary in engagement. In, in brief, what are those? I just coined the phrase listen, dot, ask, dot, interact, so that all of our analysts will also start using all of these capabilities to listen to what people are saying, do survey work to ask and you know probe and go deeper, and then to interact where we can collaborate and co-create with our consumers that are curating content today you know, in very powerful, very meaningful, very relevant um, ways. Mm -hmm. Okay. Explain to me your Gumby theory. It really all starts with the big idea. 
you can't create any content if you don't really have a big idea for what your brand stands for today and how you really want your you know consumers to engage with you. It really is have an idea and stretch that idea in relevant, authentic ways in context, in content, and in channel. So I started calling it the Gumby Theory. You know, Gumby's a cute little stretchy um, green guy that we all play with and we're all familiar with. And when you stretch Gumby, he looks a little different when you stretch him. But when he comes back, he's still Gumby and he still has his core DNA. So Gumby is the big idea. And then when you stretch him, you know, you stretch him and create content that resonates and that influences in context, in channel. But he comes back and he's still Gumby. That's your Research Business Daily Report sponsored by Google Consumer Surveys providing easy answers for every business decision. The link underneath today's RBDR video can take you to an animated video that will tell you everything you could possibly want to know about Google Consumer Surveys. Take advantage of it. Have a great research day, a solid rest of your research week. Please enjoy your weekend and by all means join us back here on Monday.